Good day everyone, um, welcome back to Kinetic by Design. This channel is dedicated to teaching you everything you need to know about mechanism design. And today we are hitting it again with Fusion 360. And today the topic is all about creating gears and how you can make gears roll around in Fusion 360. So maybe this is something that maybe many people don't know is that Fusion 360 already comes with a gear, uh, spur gear creators. So if you go yeah, let me do this again quickly. If you go to scripts and add-ins from here, and then you go to add-ins, you can find this sample add-in which is called Spur Gear. You don't have to run this with the Python um, uh, with the Python icon. You run this, right? So you, when you run it, it will tell you that the Spur Gear command has been added to the create panel in the model workspace. So what happens here is that now we have um, this Spur Gear command, which is actually a simple, very simple tool that creates Spur Gear. So if you don't know what this is all about, I'll explain briefly and I will, let, uh, I will leave a link in the description to explain more about how gears work and what, is, um, what are the different nomenclatures and so on. Basically, you have, a one, you have one circle that's called the redundant circle that goes on on the top of the gear and you have the root circle which is kind of called the redundant circle that goes on the bottom of the tooth, all right? But rather, more, much more importantly, is your pitch diameter. This is your pitch circle diameter. This is the diameter at which, this is a circle at which uh, the two gears actually come in contact. In other words, if you have two gears and you draw instead of them two circles that will be tangent to one another when they rotate, this is the PCD, the pitch circle diameter. This is a pitch circle. So the pitch circle is the circle in, at which the contact actually happens at this point, at this point, and so on. All right, so what's, what's going on here? The Fusion is asking you, the standard is metric, I use metric. Leave the pressure angle at 20. The module, all right, what is the module? The module equals uh, your pitch circle diameter over the number of uh, teeth that you want to have. So for now, let's stick to module number, module three. And the number of teeth here, let's just give it a try. This is 12, and you can see that uh, already Fusion 360 has calculated uh, the pitch circle diameter to be equal 36, which is 3 times 12, because your module equals your PCD over 12, over the number of two, right? Keep, keep in mind this number because it's quite important. Later we will see how we are going to use this, because this number I, uh, added with the other number pitch circle diameter from the other uh, uh, gear will specify the, the center to center distance. All right, anyway, let's keep going. All right, when you press OK, what happens here is a fusion, the, the, the script is running, and bam, there we go. This is a spur gear, 12 tooth, and it's already created in a specific component, and you can see it here in the middle. You can see that this, uh, uh, this script is also quite nice in terms of the fact that it actually gives you one uh, circle, one sketch of the circle, and this is the pitch circle that you have here. All right, so this is your first gear. Now, before I want to move on to create my second gear, Let's go ahead and create a frame for this gear to roll on. Or you know what? No, 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 no. Let's keep the frame until the end so we can get the, the center distance between the two gears. For now, let's actually ground this gear and later we'll unground it to do other stuff with it. Let's hide it again. Let's hide it as well and move on to creating our next gear. Again, what you can do is from create, spur gear, metric 20, the pressure anger has to be the same for two gears to mesh together. Module is three, but rather the number of tooth is 24, double the number of teeth from the other gear. And you can see that our pitch circle diameter here is 72. Now, you can imagine this, okay, let me, let me, let me show you this in real life. So uh, again, you press okay, the script is running and bam, we have our gear right there. Great. Now, if you unlock the other gear, and let's go to this view. Okay, something is wrong with Fusion today. I am trying to get to the front view, but it's not working. Awesome. All right, never mind. Let's simply drag this gear this way. Now, again, the, the, the point we are trying to get at is to have these two gears mesh together, which means that they, their pitch circles will actually be a tangent. Now, what we are trying to calculate is the distance between this center and this center. And the way you calculate this is you already know the diameter of this circle, and you already know the diameter of this circle. Now, if you um, take this radius plus this radius, will give you the diameter, the center-center distance that you want to calculate. 
Um, that's it actually. So you're mounting you're mounting for your gears, which is very important to know the center to center distance. This is where you're going to mount the gears. Have to be calculated from this pitch circle diameter and the other pitch circle diameter. So we know that this is 36, and we know that this is 72. So 36 over 2, uh, that is 15, 18. Uh, yeah, 18. And then here we have 72 over 2, which is 37. Right, 35, 36. All right. So what I want to do now is actually go back here. Yep, you just Command Z, hide these two components, and again, uh, go ahead and create a new component. Let's call this component, um, yep, let's call this component the frame. Ah, sorry, that's a mistype right there. Let's call this component frame. All right now, this component is active. What I want to do is I want to create a sketch and... Ah, come on, what's wrong with Fusion today? I think they have fixing some stuff or something, but it's not very fluid. I think my MacBook is fine, but anyway. So if you come here, let's create a rectangle. I like to use center point rectangles because they are symmetrical, which is awesome. So if we create this rectangle, let's see 100 by 200, 200. And you press enter twice and that's it. You get, oh, I think this is way too much, but never mind, it will work for now. Now what you want to do is simply extrude this. You simply extrude this profile. Let's say I want to extrude this. Oh, actually, no, wait. Let's actually fix everything together in one point. Okay, let's sketch everything together in one point. So what I want to do now is I want to make a hole here. And the diameter is 12.7, which is the diameter of the board that we have in our circle, in our gears. And let's see another one that's also 12.7. All right, great. Now I know that the small gear have a pitch circle diameter of 36, so this equals 36 over 2. Bam, done. And I know that the big circle, the big uh, gear have uh, a pitch circle diameter of 72, so this is 72 over 2 to get you the radius, and that's it, done. This is actually it, nothing much more, to be honest. So what I want to do now is again press E, I go back to extrude, I extrude first, I extrude everything. Let me extrude this, this side, negative 15 will do. And then now I want to extrude again, but extrude these two profiles, this side to at least um, 15 will do well. 15 will do well, go inside frame, hide the sketch, now it looks good. Uh, chamfer these edges so it makes more sense to my eyes. Actually, that's very important for me. I'm not very sure about you, um, but this is critical actually. Yep, I'm holding command or control on my keyboard, by the way. Let's give it a one millimeter chamfer by 45. Yes, looking good, buddy. Okay, if we go back to our unsaved, or whatever we want to call it, and you go back to your spur gear, this is the big gear which hooks up here. Simply said, let's make it a joint. No, I don't want to capture position. The joint is going to be between this point on the gear. Okay, let me zoom in just a bit. I'm holding, uh, I'm holding command on my keyboard to uh, keep the selection constant. And I want to fix it to this point. I'm not gonna fix it. Sorry. I have want to have it to revolute. All right, that's done. And now let's go and assemble the other gear. Uh, yeah. By the way, let's ground the frame so it doesn't move around and make us give us headache. Unground the other spur gear. Take the spur gear this way. You when you click joint again. I'm going a bit fast, but because this is not what I want to teach. What I want to teach is coming in a while. This is very simple. Okay, go here, yeah. Done, it's again Revolute, and bam, this is it. I hope this guy works now. No, it doesn't work. Okay, now we have these two gears. Look around here, yes, that's what I'm talking about. You can see these two circles are now tangent, and because they are tangent, those two gears are now in mesh. Can you see that? They are meshing quite well. If that's, if I'm saying that correctly, I would really like that.
but I don't think I am. Anyway, moving on. Now, what I want to do is, I know that because of these two gears, one gear has doubled the teeth of the other gear. If I rotate the small gear, one circle, one turn, one circle, one turn, 360 degrees, 360 degrees, the other gear is going to rotate half that because it's bigger. It has double the number of tooth. So this gear is only going to rotate 180 degrees. So the way to achieve this in fusion is by doing a motion link. Now, first of all, just make sure... All right, thank you, MacBook is telling me that's 11 o'clock right now. Thank you so much. Anyway, now if you hover on top of your gears, now first of all, make sure that your gears are actually not interfering with one another. Yeah, uh, you can just eyeball this, it works well. And now, let's capture the position. And from there, let's go to uh, motion link. Now, what I want to do is, I want to link this uh, joint with this joint. How I want to link this is that when one of them rotates, uh, okay, stop moving, thank you. With one of them rotates 360 degrees, which is a big one, the other guy, I wanted to rotate double that, which is 720 degrees. Now, if you want to play that, okay, reverse this, and voila, it works well. Done. This is it. This is how you work with gears in Fusion 360. So when you move this around, it actually meshes together and looks good. Now, you might want to have some other consideration if you're planning to 3D print this, for example. So I, my 3D printer is not very, very accurate, so the AI 3D printer. So I would leave some room in my center distance. Uh, if I am going to 3D print this, again, I would leave some room in my center distance. So I want to go here again and simply... Oops, oops. Ah, zoom out, you idiot. Okay. I would give it a half millimeter this way and a half millimeter this way. I think that will make sense. Plus uh, 0.5. I like to leave the equations there. So when I come back to it, it makes more sense to me. If I want to modify it, I know where this number is coming from. So I leave it this way and I just add to it, like you can see. So that's what I would do if I was going to 3D print this. Now it looks weird, I know. Like as a mechanical engineer, I know that this looks weird. And in normal life, if you're actually making these out of metal and so on, and they have to mesh together well, oh, what's going on? They have to mesh together well. Um, this, this, is, this is really not a very good practice. But because this is, uh, what happened here? Okay, unground this, maybe I did something weird. What's going on? Unground this guy. Yeah, now they can rotate, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, now, yeah, like I said, this looks weird, again, because these two circles have a gap in between them. But again, if you're making these out of uh, out of metal, and if they are precision machined, you can see, can you see this gap? Can you see this gap? This gap is called backlash. Because your center distance is not very cool and so on, this gap is called backlash. What's going to happen in real life is that when this gear, the big gear, is starting to move, it's going to move freely for a while before it starts touching the other gear. And when that happens, there's going to be friction between those two gear surfaces. With rotation after rotation after rotation, there's going to be a lot of wear. So backlash is usually avoided when you're designing gears in real life. So when, um, when you're making gears, for example, for a power tool, it's usually avoided, especially for a power tool, because your power tool is going to be starting and stopping, starting and stopping, starting and stopping, and if you have this gap, those two gears are going to be bam, 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 and they're going to hurt one another. And this friction is really going to make things very much worse. Okay, I think this is it for now, but if you're going to 3D print this, I recommend leaving it this way. Um, maybe a quarter millimeter on each side or a half millimeter on each side looks good. Okay, um, this is it I guess for this video. Like this video if you liked it, dislike this video if you disliked it. If you have different feelings, let me know in the comments below. And I would like to see you again at Kinetic by Design. Bye-bye for now.